So after we had that massive winter blizzard, the weather actually warmed up rather quickly. It's really good. Another thing that's been going on here is that it's been raining a lot. Let me try to go somewhere a little less noisy because this vacuum is... So after the blizzard, we had really warm weather. And actually, during December, we usually have like a week where the weather warms up rather significantly. Um, so it's not unheard of that we have a warm uh, day or two here in December. But the thing that's weird about it is that we had a massive blizzard. I mean, it covered everything in snow. The roads were terrible. We had literally a state of emergency in my county. It was pretty much shut down. And then after that, uh, it's been really, really warm, guys. And it's rained pretty much every day since we've had the blizzard. Um, and I'm thankful for that because I don't have to um, worry about shoveling tons of snow. And it's I enjoy the warmer weather. Um, it's not like summer warm, but it's not freezing either. And everything's been melting. Whatever little snow um, is left is pretty much all on its way out now. It's been washed out. The roads are looking good. Um, everything looks nice and clean. And I'm just enjoying the rather warm weather for December. So today I'm gonna try and let the chickens out for the first time. Even though it's rainy and it's kind of gross in the run, I wanna let them out to get them outside because they haven't been let out in like two weeks. We've kept them in the new coop. Because if you put the chickens in their new home, and you don't lock them up for at least a few days, like four or five days at least, they'll get out and they'll try to go back and find their old home. And because uh, their old chicken coop is pretty close by and they can see it, <laughs> uh, they know exactly where it is. We didn't want them to run right back down the hill and just go back to their old coop. So we kept them up here for about a week and a half, almost two weeks. I think by the end of this week, it'll be two weeks. So I think today is a great day to let them out into the run at least um it is fenced so i'm gonna let them out and then uh we're just gonna check on the goats they're all doing really well we have to deworm them just because it's breeding season and uh we deworm usually not every we don't deworm every year we only deworm when they look like they need it um and goats do carry a very high worm load so i try to stay on top of the deworming as much as I can. So we're gonna have to do that when Jesse comes home uh, from work today. If we can get down there, depending on how much rain it is. If it's too rainy and we can't do it today, we'll have to postpone it and do it tomorrow. But uh, we really like to have all of the girls deworm and treated for coxie before they get pregnant or as soon as they get pregnant so that uh, they're good to go for the next five months until they give birth. And that way, uh, they're not carrying a big worm load while they're carrying a baby as well, because that's just way too taxing on their body. So we're gonna do that. That's our plans for this week. As for our long-term plans uh, for the homestead, right now we're basically just trying to get through this season. Um, it's a rather slow season for us here. It, we usually spend more time tending to the animals and doing animal husbandry tasks around the farm because there's no gardens, there's no gardening. That's pretty much 50% of the tasks right there gone. I'm really excited to uh, have a breeding season starting up because I would love to have my goats bred so we can get some new kids uh, so that we can put them up for sale. I do have two kids still for sale uh, for my last breeding and they're two boys. So hopefully I can get them sold rather quickly so that by the time we get these does bred, um, they'll be gone to their farm. Uh, oh, I wanna bring you guys along to show you a lot more of my cooking. Today we're actually having curry chicken, or chicken curry. Um, I have the chicken defrosting in the, uh, in the sink right now, so I'll be making a curry dish. I'm hoping I can bring you guys along with me a little bit, but when I cook, I make a huge mess, honestly, and um, so I'm gonna try and keep everything <laughs> camera friendly so that I can show you guys the process of how I cook some of my meals. So today we're gonna do a chicken curry and of course it's with the chickens we raised last year. So that's really, really wonderful. We still have probably a good 40% of the chickens that we butchered last year still in the freezer. Last year we went in on a quarter beef cow. Uh, we got pretty much one leg. Uh, that cost us around $600.
We're trying to find a better deal though for um, for beef. We did get some excellent, excellent cuts. We had amazing steaks and roasts and all of that. The one thing I would cut back on next time when I do go in on uh, part beef is that I don't want to have as much ground beef because I know a lot of the meat ends up being ground beef, but I have so much that I really don't even know what to do with all of it. I've made hamburger patties, I've made, you know, beef chunks, just so many different things, ground beef, and we're just like ground beef out. <laughs> We'd much prefer to have more steaks and just other cuts of meats, even more roasts and things like that. So hopefully, if we do go in on a beef cow this year, we'll be able to get more of the cuts that we want and less of the foods that we have an abundance of right now. So that's my plan for um, the next coming couple of months is that we can go in on another uh, beef cattle. So uh, we made a video a couple days ago uh, talking about water and the importance of water. One of the other things that um, I'm looking really forward to is going ice fishing this uh, winter. We love ice fishing. It hasn't frozen over significantly enough yet to go ice fishing on the lake. But Jesse really loves to go ice fishing, so that's something we do as a family. And he goes by himself or with his friends and he brings home a lot of good fish uh, for the freezer because we love fish um, in our house. Wherever we can get meat, we're high carnivore people. Um, I try to focus more on having really healthy protein and, you know, just meats in general and animal products. So. Fish is a great way to supplement uh, the different types of meats that you have. Unless there's some sort of fish allergy or something, you definitely should invest in um, in fish. And really, it doesn't take much of an investment at all to go fishing. You know, just some worms or some, some kind of bait and your fishing rod. Um, you're definitely going to need a fishing license if you're going out on the lake and whatnot. But it's pretty simple and rather cost effective to catch fish. You can catch salmon, perch, bass, trout. Like there's so many different kinds of amazing fish and usually they're right there in a local lake near you. So make sure you go fishing and you stock up your freezer with fish because I love salmon and I, I eat salmon at least once or twice a week and having a steady supply of fish in general just really helps us balance out the different types of proteins we're having. Fish is really important for our family because we know that we can catch it pretty much for free. I mean, it probably costs a few cents with the things that we need to catch a fish. Uh, compared to raising any other meats or any other livestock, catching fish is probably one of the most cost effective things you can do uh, where you actually get real something real that you can eat. Um, and that's a really good source of protein and all of the good fats as well because it's a rather healthy source of meat. If you have a way of procuring seafood in general, that's an excellent way to um, add variety to your family's dishes and all of that. So make sure you're not skimping on the fish, guys. I think it's super important that um, we have a good amount of fish and, just, and uh, just seafood in general in our diet. Yeah, go fishing, go ice fishing. It's fun. You can go with your family, you can go with your friends, you can go by yourself. It's just an all around good time. And it's a great way to enjoy the cold weather, which we have a lot of <laughs> being Canadian. So yeah, um, we're gonna be doing a lot of that this year. What else happened? Oh, we got a new truck. We bought a new truck um, yesterday. We just picked it up last night. That's really exciting. We haven't had a new vehicle in about nine years. So it's pretty exciting to have a new vehicle and um, Jesse's really excited that he has a truck now. <laughs> he can fit in more with uh, <laughs> the country folk around here. So what I'm working on for the next few months, probably not until, you probably won't see this come to fruition until probably the summer or even maybe next fall, depending on how quick I'm able to get this done. But I'm working on an audio book it's for you know beginner homesteaders, beginner intermediate homesteaders, and it's gonna encompass pretty much everything that we've been talking about on the homestead for the past two years that we've had the channel. Make sure you guys look out for that. Right now we're just in the beginning stages of working on it, but I wanted to tell you that because I'm super excited to announce that I'm working on my first audiobook. Now it's not gonna come out for a while, so just bear with me as I work through the process of actually creating this thing. A lot of hard work goes into it, so we'll see. I'm, I'm really excited though. Um, if you guys haven't checked out my website, greenskinready.com, or you could check it out by going to simplypurebysalisha.com, 
I make and sell lots of body butters and skincare products. So um, you guys can check it out there. That's where I'll be uploading my the audiobook to. I'll also obviously have it on Amazon and Kindle and all of that. But uh, the best place to find it will be on my website. It won't be for a while though, so stay tuned for that. Okay, let's go outside and um, let these chickens out and I can give you a quick little tour of how everything's looking in their new coop. Wrap this up for the day. All right, it's raining, so I'm gonna try and be quick. The rain hasn't let up at all. So I'm just gonna run over here. Oh wow, it's really coming down, y'all. What? I don't know if the chickens will wanna come out, but I'm gonna let them out and, uh, oh gosh. Okay, so I opened up the little door there. I don't think they wanna come out though. <laughs> I wouldn't either in this weather. <laughs> Hi, ladies and gents. <laughs> uh, so we did install the two nest boxes. They look absolutely perfect, you guys. I can't wait for them to start laying. I do have the lights set up here, so it comes on at around 4, 4.30 in the morning, which gives them like an extra three hours of daylight. Um, and we just screwed that in right there into a piece of two by four. And then there's some screws on here. This thing is really like strong, so heavy chickens can go in there and it doesn't bend or sway or anything. And I really like it. So it should keep everything off the floor and they can get up and away. This is their waterer. With the door closed, it doesn't freeze as much because we have a bunch of chickens in here. So we've noticed with all of the doors closed, um, the water stays rather warm and it doesn't freeze as quickly so we don't have to replace it uh, too much we did put it off the ground though and then this is their feeder here with their layer feed eventually we're going to hang up the bucket of layer feed we find keeping it elevated off the ground and hanging from a rope uh, it actually decreases the amount that they hop on top of the feeder bucket um, it decreases the amount of poop all around it or inside of it um, and because it's like on a string and it does it's not very stable the chickens don't want to jump all over it and hang out on top of the bucket so we like hanging it from the roof and that also prevents like pests like mice and things like that for getting in there uh, because it's elevated off the ground but still enough that the chickens can get to it easily. My girls and their boy are so happy up here. Okay, let's get out of here and get out of the rain. It's, it's destroying my hair. <laughs> I'm just gonna leave their door open for the next few hours and we'll come, I'll come back down here and lock them up. See how much closer it is to the house now? So when it's time to lock the chickens up at night, I don't have to go all the way down the hill. Uh, to put them away. It was just a pain in the butt to do that all the time, every night. We have a few ducks down the hill. We did show you guys that we brought them down the hill. However, they don't, we put their food and water in the coop most of the time, so we don't have to go down there every single day to let them out. Maybe every couple of days we go in, we let them out, and then my son locks them back up when he comes uh, from school or whatnot. So everybody's doing really well. All the goats are inside. You can see they just stay inside now that it's chillier and they really don't come out for much, only to eat hay. <laughs> um, but especially now that it's raining. Okay guys, I'm heading back in. I'm soaked, it's cold. We've been keeping a lot of the hay inside of my greenhouse as well because it's too cold to grow anything anyway in the greenhouse. The greenhouse is really only to extend the growing season so that we can grow well into September, October, and even a little bit in November. But once it's December, January, there's no growing in the greenhouse. So we use it to store some of the, the hay that we have delivered, and then we bring it down in batches down the hill. <sighs> okay. I'm gonna start getting dinner ready. <sighs> okay, guys. <laughs> I was only out there for like five minutes and I'm already soaked and tired. So I'll see you guys in the next one.
All right, guys, well, thank you for joining me for another episode here at Hillside Homesteading. I really hope you're appreciating my content. And if you are, please make sure to share it to social media or anywhere that you think it would be helpful. Um, it really does help me out to get the word out there and to start building my channel because my number one goal for 2023 is to build this channel a lot bigger and to get a larger following. And I can't do that without you. Thank you guys for joining me. Make sure you like comment and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Stay peaceful. Bye.